Okay, it's time for another bit of bisque de decorating. I have another one of these wonderful vases. They're uh, about uh, 10 inches high. Uh, they were thrown by John Arnott, very good potter and good friend. And I've just centered it on the center of my wheel and I always make a point of putting the logo on the backside and then I know where the front is. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just take this damp cloth and give it a little spin. Make sure I get all the dust off it. I've done it a few times, so I'm pretty good here, but just so you see how I do this. A little bit on the inside. I blew the dust out of the inside of it too, which is always fun. Good for a sneeze. Okay, so today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I do a loon. Um, it's not gonna be this particular pattern, but that is the loon that we're going for. It's gonna be uh, just like that. Okay, so let's see. Um, it's going to be a sunset pattern, which we use several different colors for. I've done another video about doing the sunset pattern, um, but I'm gonna start out like I do with all of these, um, but my horizon line is gonna be a little higher because the loon requires a little bit more water. So, um, <laughs> the pattern in my mind it does anyway okay so I'm just laying on the blue under glaze so this really nice rich blue and I'm just using my wheel to get that glaze evenly all over where I want it so like that then I want to come in at the top for the sky and and I'm gonna just bring it on down. Now this, at this point, I can have it be a little bit um, uh, streaky because I want it to be streaky because you know the sky isn't necessarily perfect all the time. Okay, so we have that color. And I just darken up the very top of it and the horizon line. And I like to get a nice, good, thick blue glaze on here because I'll be scraping it away to get to the white. Okay, now uh, let's see. We're going to do a little yellow. The yellow really looks like yellow uh, before it gets fired, which is kind of nice. Not all of the glazes look like the color that you're painting them, which really throws off a lot of people. They just just can't get their head wrapped around a, a brown a brown lake or <laughs> a brown water. Okay, and then the red as well does sort of present as more like a red, but again, not the way it's gonna be when it fires. It will be much, much redder. Okay, so that's got a nice streak to it. Put a little bit more. Put a little bit more blue in here. That blue and the red makes a nice purple when it overlays each other. Okay, now what I'm going to do is come in and do the teal blue on the water. This is a really fun pattern. It's very colorful and pretty. Painting bisque is not as easy as it looks. It it's the glaze doesn't flow as even evenly like on paper and when I first started out it was very difficult for me because I had been doing a lot of sumi painting and uh painting like that on paper not up like this just sometimes just keeping the glaze on your brush is hard enough because you're like this it's practically upside down but perseverance patience, occasional swearing, that all helps. Okay, so I have my colors down. Looks pretty good. Let me just stop it here so you don't get dizzy. And now I come in with a black. I'm gonna try to step on this design so you can see it in real time. And I'm gonna put black on the base, black up here at the top. The camera angle makes that look a little thicker than it really is but 
in any case. Okay, so we have that. Now I need to figure out where I'm going to put my... I start with my loon. That gives me a perspective of how how everything else is going to look. So here we go. That's going to be good. Yeah. I'm going to stick it kind of up here a little bit. Okay, so that's the beak. That's the head. And I fill in the head with the black. Oh, he's going to be handsome. And then they sit low in the water. Now let me just go ahead and try to do another one too. They usually come in pairs when they're breeding. When they have their little babies. So that gives you an idea of where that's going. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom back out so you can see where I'm gonna put the trees. Um, let's see, yeah, that's where I'm gonna do it. Okay, I do my rocks first, a little water underneath, and then a tree up here. I've said this before, every, every stroke counts in in this it it there's not much forgiveness so I have to kind of make sure that uh, it looks organic when I'm painting these trees I can't go all every which way I want to go with the way they would be growing so that looks pretty good our trees and on the St. Lawrence River have this flagging effect, which is always fun. Okay, and then I'll put in a third tree down over here. These are, oops, I'm bouncing the camera, sorry. Now I put in the distant horizon. And another island with some rocks. I've had people say I make it look easy, and I probably do, but at the same time, I've also been doing it for 12 years. And we're not talking about one or two vases a day. We're talking 25, 30 vases or a dozen at a time uh, vessels. So I don't really have time to fuss with it too much. I have to be quick and efficient. But I also want every stroke to be very intentional. And I always have a, it's funny, I have a narrative. Uh, there's always some narrative going on, you know, when I'm doing it. Um, it may be simple, just a simple one, but I do have a little narrative. Um, a few years ago, I found out that you could send away your artwork and have it made into a stamp, you know, like a little rubber stamp. So I did just that. <laughs> And I had a stamp made of, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little dog. And so it's my little, my little dog that I drew and they printed it on a, on the, the uh, rubber stamp material. So I, what I do is I can, I just paint a little bit of glaze on my um, stamp. This isn't perfect and it, it's a little funny, but I can go ahead and dog on that little rock. See, <laughs> there's a little dog looking off into the distance. So there's the narrative here. So the dog is waiting for its people. This is definitely a little fussy, but I wanted to show that. Yeah, that's a nice looking dog. Yeah. And then while well, I did that at the same time, I decided that there should be um, a stamp 
uh, with the people coming home with their other dog. <laughs> See what I mean about the narrative? This one, this one doesn't work quite as well, but I still use it. I'm just loading up the piece uh, with some glaze, some underglaze. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where I want the boat to be, which is a little ways away. And then I'm pressing it onto the piece and rolling it because it's a long one. So that's how that comes out. Now this also requires a little bit of fussiness. So, so I have to get the little brush out for this one. And this one, I just come in and put a little detail there, make the head a little bit bigger. I could do this by hand, but sometimes it's kind of fun to try to use the stamps. And uh, it does give it a consistency, you know, for the pattern. There. Just a hint of some people in the boat. Okay. Uh, and onwards and upwards. Let's get going on uh, some waves here. So here's the waves water and back to the two loons waiting patiently for their for their uh, time to sit on nests I guess maybe they've just met This is a little bit more detail than I put on most of these vases. I usually just put the one loon, but this is kind of fun because I wanted to show that stamp action. Oh, here, let me get the distant shore here. Okay. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. It looks all right. Yeah. Okay. Now here comes the scraping part. Um, there's a little wave here in that boat. So I'm going to scrape that away. Also, sometimes when I use a stamp, a little bit too much of the glaze gets on it. So it makes a little glumpy thing. <laughs> glumpy. Um, so I'll just make sure that all that looks good. That's good. And then here comes the loon. I'm going to zoom in on this one so you can see what I'm doing with the loon. There. So I'm taking the X-Acto knife. Oops. <laughs> Make it a mess. And I'm just going to scrape away where I want white. Instead of doing little dots like that, which would take me all day, I do this. Just do a line, very organic looking at line. Now you notice I'm not too worried about that scratch I put on. I'm gonna fix, fix that later, but I have a tendency to try to stay on task and go back and fix things later. Okay, there we go. And then I just make sure that like little pieces like that are not sticking to it. There's a little piece of dust I just found. Okay, so that's how that looks, okay? Now um, I can come in with the, the detail on these guys. I should use a smaller brush, but I'm not going to. Now see that little, that little scratch there is almost gone. It'll disappear in the firing. I'm just putting the lines, making it a, kind of a crisscross pattern like that. And there are two handsome loons. Look pretty good. 
Okay, and then uh, from here, I'm just going to go through and do some more waves, as I've often said uh, it's a good idea to make sure that there's more waves uh, ref kind of reflected underneath the, the uh, trees. And then as you go into the distance, the waves get smaller. Well, let me get a little bit of detail here. These little waves from the boat, the little wake from the boat. On the St. Lawrence River in the Thousand Islands area, there are many islands, 1,800 some odd islands, and uh, people live on these islands and they go back and forth by boat. A lot of times you'll see uh, a dog standing on the dock looking out towards the mainland, wondering where their people are. <laughs> um, and then I like to put a little distant bird a little cheesy, but I love, like to do that. And there we go. I think it's done. And then this will all get glazed. Oh, it looks really small with my hand like that, but um, this will get glazed. It will be shiny, bright colored. Uh, I don't really have that, an example of that pattern, uh, but you can see in this piece that... Um, the yellow, this is a, a Christmas tree pattern that I did, uh, but that yellow gets like that. And that's the teal color right there. So you can see that a little bit, right? And the loon, again, the loon will fire up to be like that. I don't have very good light there. There you go. There's another loon. So there you have it. There's my loon. And I know it was long, but... That's the way it's done, real time. Thanks for watching. Sarah Smith, out.